This is the tale of Murray Sterling. His 18th birthday was fast approaching and he knew he must escape the clutches of the island before that date or be forced to spend the rest of his adult life in the caves neath the island digging for precious stones to adorn the laird's numerous ceremonial capes and his bongos. His dream was to start a new life on the mainland. Many times he imagined himself wearing the orange and blue tabard of the B&Q organisation, guiding customers towards the wallpaper paste or replacement fence panelling, laughing with colleagues in the staff room as they chatted to each other through short lengths of drain pipe. Sometimes he saw himself in Cafe Nero buying a guest bean cappuccino and requesting an extra shot from a waitress with plenty of tit. <laughs> and for sure, he would submit the relevant forms to gain residence rights at Oak Furniture Land with that portly man and his dozy son and enjoy the cosy wooden lifestyle it offered. But for now, he needed a boat and that was an illegality on the island. The laird employed a giant of a man, known only as the boatman. He would search the island every day for evidence of boat building and smash what he found with his spiked iron ball and chain. The boatman's face was always covered with a hessian hood, but it was said that underneath he had the face of thirteen chickens. The face of thirteen chickens! The face of thirteen chickens. But Murray had been clever. He had assembled his craft inside the old lighthouse, a place that no other, including the boatman, would trespass, for it was reputed to be the home of mainland Mary, a spectre similar to the Lamnia that would devour you with pure buttery love. Murray knew that such talk was bullwater, so had used the lighthouse as a safe haven to build his boat. The night arrived and Murray entered the lighthouse and began to untether his hand-built boat that he had fashioned from hardened turkey tods joined together with <laughs> sticky glue. Suddenly the room was filled with a golden light and his heart was instantly filled with joy. A figure appeared in front of him, more beautiful than the very centre of desire. She wore a blue and orange... <laughs> She wore a blue and orange tabard and was seated in an oak dining chair. Beside her was an occasional table, again made of oak, <laughs> and, a, and a bookshelf made from imported oak. She had, she had touched a spare and a bottom that stretched her full length. She slowly leaned forward to offer him a cappuccino, ready poured in a paper cup with a Wi-Fi code written upon it. Drink me, Murray, Murray, drink me. Drink me, Murray, Murray, drink me, she chanted. She was the mainland, and he wanted to reside within her. Then, boom, the door to the room burst open, and in strode the boatman. The vision of the lassie dissipated, and he was all alone and in fear. She gave you... Sorry, I changed my voice. She gave you a window into your life on the mainland. But that is all you will ever know of it. The boatman began to remove his hessian mask, and what Murray saw killed him in an instant. The boatman had the face of sixteen owls. The face of sixteen owls. So, that's a, um, a solitary tale about tres yep. trespass and 